Hi there, my name is Meredith White. I teach Spanish 1 and 2 outside of Atlanta, just northeast of Atlanta in Gwinnett County. And uh, we've had some recent conversations on Twitter and in conferences and workshops about games that are low prep, no prep that we can use often. And maybe games, if I'm being more specific, that don't require a ton of setup. I know as language teachers, I think we're pretty darn good at games. And I think we're good at games that hold kids' attention um, and that, you know, have kind of fun and flashy moving parts and all that kind of thing. We're really good at game boards sometimes, um, especially if there's a task that they have to land on and that kind of thing. And you make a class set of game boards and they, you know, have little game pieces. And we're pretty good at that. Bingo. So not just any games, but... And not just your, like I said, your standard bingo or your fly swatter or that kind of thing, but games that are low prep, no prep, um, that are kind of fast and can be kind of a 10 minute thing or can be a planned thing. And maybe just, you know, on Thursdays we play this game. So in, in tweeting out pictures of them recently, I've had people ask some questions. So I just wanted to talk about and show pictures of a couple of my favorites, which are my go-to games. And I find that kids kind of look forward to them. Uh, more so than when I was using a different game every time. And I say that to say, I tend to try a lot of things and that can be a blessing or a curse because when you try a lot of different things, sometimes you never get good at one of the things or it's, you know, it, you just never get a chance to get it like a well-oiled machine. And that can be frustrating because you have to explain it a bunch of times or pass out the game pieces and then go, okay, now here's what we're doing. And that can just feel, because it's new every time, that can just feel like, you know, like, like it, like it feel like it's the first time every time, because essentially it is. So as much as I love to try things, I also love go-to routine things that you just go, okay, here's your deck of cards, go from there. And if you've played the game before or a thousand times before, kids know what to do. Um, groaning aside or whatever. I just know it's December. And I need some things that I can go, here you go, have a nice day. As much now, if not more, uh, than I'll need in April. April's a really fun time for a lot of games you've played and recycle them and bring back the greatest hits. There's a reason we want to hear Journey sing, you know, the songs we want to hear Journey sing. It's the greatest hits. There's a reason, you know, we all sing along to Neil Diamond, ba ba ba, and it's like Sweet Caroline, bring back the greatest hits. So um, I kind of feel that way about games. A couple of my favorites are um, games they already know how to play a lot of times, like Jenga. So don't worry about my messy desktop here. Ignore the cards. Um, Jenga is one of my favorites. And I bought these colored sets on Amazon. And all I do is just color code questions, like you can see to the right here. So I'll pull these up into view. There are six different colors for these blocks. And so six different color questions. I find that with question and answer format, kids do them like twice. Overachievers do them nearly every time, but at some point, even overachievers stop asking and answering because it interrupts the flow of the game. Um, and novices especially get frustrated. Oh, wait, what's it asking? Oh, what I'm asking you? Oh, okay, so ask anybody. Then they get kind of uncomfortable asking anybody, so they just stop asking. And then we've only been in the game eight minutes, and I'm walking around going, where's the Spanish? Why aren't you Spanishing? And then I'm yelling things like, it's interpersonal. And then anyways, uh, or tell your partner, don't ruin this for us. She'll make us right. I find myself walking around shouting things like that. And I am she. I am the one. Don't ruin this for us. She'll make us right. So when I put them as sentence frames, as you can see in the black there with the six colors, sentence frames work a lot better for me. In fact, I, I don't have any of those issues pretty much nine times out of 10 with sentence frames because all they have to do is fill in the variable. My house is blank. My favorite activity at home is blank. And um, they can go from there and it's easy for them to go, oh, I pulled green. Okay, let's see, like, you know, choose, choose it, go green, da, 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 then pull it. Or you can have them um, pull it out, say the thing, and if they can't say the thing and it makes sense to the group, they have to put the block back in, and that one's kind of fun. So Jenga is kind of a, a game they're already familiar with that can be a lot of fun to play in the language setting. Again, I find it best for me and my students in my classroom to have sentence frames. So I find like some of the answers maybe to the can-do statements. If the can-do statements is, I can talk about what I like to do at home, then there's the red one my favorite activity at home is blank. So if they can state that, then they can do, or they're set up to do on their own later without scaffolding, that I can statement. 
So take that if you will. Um, to the left of it, you see the game Spoons. I love the game Spoons because it's um, it's like high action. Let me find a picture of it here. I have all these things displayed for you. Um, it's high action, usually pretty high interest. The competitive kids find it like a pretty sexy game. And all you need is either a deck of cards or a deck of specially made cards. So in the info to this video, I'm going to link two of my favorite resources, one from Martina Bex and then, um, well, they're both, one from Martina and then one from another vendor. And um, basically for this one, you just need to get three cards of the same. So this plays the same way with spoons. If you're playing with spoons, you usually play four with a deck of cards, like a camp or whatever. It's a pretty common-ish game. And um, you just have all the spoons in the middle. And just like musical chairs, you have one fewer spoon than people. So in this picture of the circle, you can see there are about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like seven spoons. So there were eight people playing. And basically the objective is to be the first, to be one of the people that gets a spoon. You don't want to be left out not grabbing a spoon. How you grab a spoon is, or how you be one of the, the first one to grab it, is as you're going with the cards, with a regular deck of cards, if you're just playing with friends, you get four of a kind. So like four diamonds, four spades, four hearts, or four kings, four sevens. It can either be the suit or the number or whatever. In a language classroom, we modify it usually to be like this set that you can see is the translation, like like Spanish word, English word, picture. That's a great one because then they have to really be thinking, does this picture make sense? Um, and so on. And so you can see this PDF. This is the link that I've that I've um, that I'm going to link it to. This is the resource that I'm going to link it to. Hijo, son, picture of a small boy. Hija, daughter, picture of a small girl, and so on. And so students can either sit here at desks. I am deskless. I have no desks. I am desk free. So my students were sitting on the floor kind of in groups or in chairs. And basically you print out the cards, cut them individually, and then students are just, there's the teacher hand lick, right? That's what we do. I'm not even holding papers, but my instinct is like to lick my finger. God, we are out of control. And so the instinct, uh, sorry, let me get my life together. The stack of cards is sitting right there. One person pulls it up and goes, no, nope, I don't want it, or I do want it. And they decide based on their hand if they want to keep it. I'll link a video, uh, which I like to show students into the comments on this video. But basically, it's a great game. And as long as you have cards or so you can make your own cards like this, purchase cards. Sometimes when I'm sitting around just like watching Sim TV, I like to just write on an entire deck of cards. So this is descriptions. And this is kind of fun because you can pull out some of the grammar as well. So maybe they need to find singular masculine singular feminine, uh, plural masculine, plural feminine. So in Spanish, they need to have bonito, bonita, bonitos, bonitas. Now, before any like comprehensible input or TPRS, like you're my people, but before any of those people who are hardcore and they just need more input and whatever, get their torches and their pitchforks. Listen, I'm one of you, okay? I'm doing the best I can. But I have a district assessment that they take at the end of the semester that I have no control over and I have to give. So as much as I would love to say, oh, I don't, I don't even think you need to say things like masculine singular, I do. So for my reality, that's a thing. They need to be able to pick out of a set of choices which one describes the boy. Is it bonito, bonita, bonitos, bonitas? That's just what my reality is. So that's a fun way. Or it can just be meaning. I know for some decks, I like to write nouns on them. So like, if you want to put them in context, if you are still kind of watching this and holding your pitchfork and your torch and you're like not sure if you want to put it down yet, you can also put them in context. And so there'll be some decks I like to put a verb, you know, people, could be from a story you're currently doing, um, something that you've read recently, anything. And they have to put in a sentence that they could make sense. So if it's like there, you know, there is a girl, her name is Mary or something. That's the four they're looking for or three, however many. What's fun sometimes is just to have them go around and like you, they have no idea when you're going to like stop the music or play a bell or you have some kind of sound indicator. And so as they're, they're just trying to find three that they know fit together. Um, you can ring a bell, everybody freezes, everybody pauses and they have to turn and either like say a set, like say somehow combine all four of the cards they have into something that makes sense. So it makes them be thinking of like four that they could put together and put in a context that makes sense. And that's pretty cool. So again, do with it what you will, 
but it's really fun, I find, and useful just to write directly on um, 